Hello my soccer universe, let's get this sorry affair over with. Uh, if you want to watch me happy, you can watch uh, the last Serie A video that I did. I was hopeful, I was bu buzzing, I was wary though as well, because yeah, that derby did not go in any way the way I wanted it to go. It went the way I feared it would go, because in the signs leading up to it, it was all, yeah, Inter is gonna win that one, that they're gonna win it 5-1. Though it's a whole different story and I will plan, spend plenty of time on this derby. But you know, uh, in this opener, let's uh, talk about a few other things as well. I think Juventus had a really good performance against Lazio. So that's one to look out for. Napoli also. Not sure what to make of them yet. Uh, they don't look quite like themselves. And there's also a little bit unrest within the squad as I hear. So uh, watch that space. Uh, Fiorentina had a Pretty amazing win over Atalanta, it gotta be said. Um, kind of bouncing back from there, heavy defeat to Inter, and yeah, everyone's getting heavy defeat uh, against Inter. And then Roma scored against seven against Empoli, and I think everyone could have scored there. Uh, no matter who would, would have played, it wasn't uh, Empoli was not only so bad, but Empoli also, um, you know. Every chance that they had, they didn't even make it. So uh, it was kind of weird signs. It is, uh, this, after the international break, things look differently. I have the feeling in Serie A, which is also a little bit odd. I'm wearing Torino, who yesterday evening got a 3 nil, big 3 nil away win at Salernitana. And maybe so Torino is another team that, uh, you know, could push for a conference league spot. I think that's the most they will get. But yeah, let's talk the derby and then I'll go through the other games because it's the re it's the game of the round. It's the biggest game um, of all of Europe, I would argue even. And it went all against Milan. Literally, it went all against Milan. Uh, like, you, Inter could not have scripted it better. And the ridiculous of Pioli saying, we controlled the first four minutes. And then you concede in the fifth minute. Yeah, but that's exactly the point. You didn't create anything either. And at the first attack of Inter, Milan's defense completely fell apart. And again, you concede early. Through Mkhitaryan. And that, although I was hopeful, you know, like you are as a fan. But that in a way settled the game. Because that's exactly what you don't want against Inter. And Inter were not uh, playing like they usually played this, this season, you know, all out storming, uh, no, not, not, you know, powerful attacking. No, they knew exactly. Pioli, and this loss is on him. This loss is on him. I'm not on, on the Pioli out uh, front yet, but this loss is very much on him. Uh, Pioli said, I'm sticking to, to, to my guns. We're going to play as we have played all season long. Notwithstanding that you don't have your number one defense, which is not good anyway. But also that Inter is probably the best counter-attacking team in Europe at that moment. And what's even more is that Inter, when Milan was attacking, kept it so tight. It was like a net where Milan barely could find a way through. And you just sit back and almost relax and wait until Milan makes a mistake. It has to be said that Milan got themselves into the game at around the half hour mark. There were like uh, two chances where I think the one from Theo, if he gets the ball a little better or gets it to Leo, there might be an equalizer there. There might be an equalizer there. Uh, but again, you're too open and you make one mistake and Dumfries, even though he overhits it in defense, the ball goes to Thuram and he scores a worldie again. It was a great shot. It's a one in a million shot. But why does Joe allow him to shoot with his better foot? Just close that alley for him. That is what I don't get. I mean, uh, it was the attack. The moment I saw it come, I said, this is going to be super, super dangerous. Even though the shot was an, improb an improbable one. And it was, uh, as I said, a worldie. It was a great goal. Even though this was there, I had the feeling they're gonna concede here because this was exactly the situation where you had suddenly uh, two dangerous inter-attackers against the unsettled Milan defense. 
And that was more or less the game. I mean, it was already done at half time to me. Yes, then the rain came down. And uh, can I quickly say on Tiram? Uh, I know many Milan fans said, yeah, let him go to Inter, blah, 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 blah. I was actually a little bit heartbroken because I saw in the German Bundesliga what this guy can, can do. He would have been perfect. He would have been perfect for Milan. No. We got great players. Don't get, 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 get me wrong. But the three positions that Milan really need now are not there. This is not a striker. I don't think Luka Jovic will do it. Someone in defensive midfield. And you need definitely one, if not two, world-class defenders. In any case, second half, the rain comes down. Uh, the game changed a little, a little bit. I mean, he brought on Chukwese for uh, Pulisic. It did not change. Them. Both were atrocious. Yes, you saw what Giroud can do in attack, uh, assisting Liao, and he gets the goal 2-1. And you say, maybe there's a little chance. <laughs> Just 10 minutes later, Mkhitaryan. Again, the first attack after this. It's 3-1, and at 70 minutes, the game was done. And if it would have stayed at 3-1, this would have been probably a rather fair representation as well. However, it got worse. And this is where I also find the team gave up. After this 3-1, the team threw it in. Penalties given. Of course, Jalanoglu, the Vermin, come, come, converts. And then uh, I think even more than the timing is the fifth one that they give up to Fratesi. Because at that point, the game was done and Inter didn't, didn't attack any anymore. But of course, they're going to take their chances. Inter look really scary. I have to give huge credit to coach Inzaghi, who correctly saw. Milan is going to do the same thing that they have been doing all season that fits us perfectly. We also saw that the defense of Milan, if there's a high-class attack, is not up for it. That one hurts. That one hurts a whole lot. And so we're going from high hopes, where Milan was really outstanding. It was fun to watch. This was not fun to watch. Uh, but you know, this might be exactly this type of season where you either play very well and you make a couple of goals or you are getting caught out and you concede a lot, a lot, a lot of goals. Um, but at this moment, one has to say um, Inter has to be considered the top favorites for the title, bar none. There's nothing else I can say about it. It hurts because they will get the second stop before Milan. But it's interest to lose. At this point in the season, it's interest to lose. Uh, but yeah, there might be some other teams in there. And let's go through the other games. I think Juventus is also hard. They really played well against Lazio. They really played well. And this Vlaovic guy uh, suddenly seems to come good. Scoring two and actually quite good goals. Also, also Chiesa gets win. Yes, Luis Alberto for a short minute. You thought... It might get interesting. It might get in, in, interesting when it was 2-1 or 3 minutes later. Uh, Vlahovic uh, scores one after McKenney assist. And I have to say this Juve team, and they don't have European commitments, uh, self-imposed. Might That actually might play in their favor. Maybe this is Juve that we have to look at if, if someone wants to stop Inter. Uh, which has, to, has, has its own history there. So yeah. Let's see, let's see how this will go, but uh, I think Juve, um, watch out for them. Let's put it that way, watch out for Juve, and the season is still young. A little bit disappointed by Lazio, to be honest. Yes, they got the win at Napoli, uh, but you know, as we see, Napoli played on a 2-2 against Genoa. Yes, coming back by 2-2 uh, two, two down through uh, Abani and Retegi. Raspatori and Politano turn it around in the last 15 minutes. But, uh, you know, again, like with Milan, we have to give it some time to see where this is going. But I think Napoli don't look themselves. And I also feel that um, Quarazgelia wants to have a little bit more money now because he would deserve it. But, of course, uh, De Laurent is not going to give him that for the contract extension. That also does not help Napoli a whole lot. Um, we had... Uh, Quite a good win for Frozen on the 4-2 over Sassuolo. Sassuolo also kind of, uh -huh, let's see. But I have to, have to say the, uh, the Fiorentina game against Atalanta, that, that was really cool. I mean, Atalanta took a deserved lead through Cop Miners. However, uh, before they have Bonaventura and Martinez Quarta turned around for Fiorentina. Uh, Adam Lukme makes it then 2-2 right after. That. And the game is um, kind of up and down. Open Kwame gets the winner for Fiorentina. But that was a statement result for Fiorentina, I have to say. Um, really, really good game 
overall uh, to watch. Uh, that was an enjoyable one. Did not watch, I only saw highlights of Roma against Empoli, but from what I can see, I said it in the opener, it was basically Roma, uh, even if their uh, staff would, would, would have played, they would have scored four. Empoli were bad in defense and even worse in attack because there are few chances that had even those that they scored. Dybala set them early on the way he's back in the uh, lineup. Then uh, Renato Sanch uh, finally makes it. The Grassi own goal is uh, epitomizes what um, Empoli were experienced this afternoon. And then Dybala, a uh, great goal to make it 4 0. Then even Brian Cristante gets in on the action. Lukaku gets in on the action. And Mancini also. It was just a pure drubbing of Empoli and then as I said we have here uh, uh, Torino get a 3-0 away win at uh, Salernitana with Radonis scoring two and having a third one this allowed Bonjour opening the scoring so if you look now at the standings yeah in the up top uh, top fav favorites Juve Milan Na Napoli hang hanging there those seem to be the top four at the moment um, if you look already to the bottom Salernitana Cagliari and Empoli look really really bad and I think this is an Emp Emp Empoli they might get relegated uh, also look at uh, the newly promoted sides we have um, Genoa being uh, relatively midfield for now uh, whereas Frosinone is already in 6th spot so uh, really really good there as well and don't forget about Lecce I have not talked much about Lecce but uh, they got another draw Lecce actually look quite interesting I think they have Davers now as coach uh, who was with Parma so uh, looking out for that one as well they are the surprise package of the season so far if you look at the expected standings so far uh, it is really in chunks we have inter the top favorite then we have potential contenders but with many question marks with napoli milan juve then we have the contenders for the european spots which is lazio atalanta uh, roma lazio atalanta and fiorentina then uh, teams that will not have any trouble but probably will not bother with european spots as well torino bologna monza unless it goes for them uh, from lecce to genoa Potential relegation candidates, however, it is Salentana, Calier and Empoli look early on as the relegation uh, top favorites, if you would like. Next round, Milan play at home to Ellas. Uh, not an easy one either. We have Juve at Sassuolo, uh, Empoli host Inter. Yeah, it's going to be another route right there. There's not really the standout tie, to be honest. Um, probably the late ones, Bologna, Napoli and Torino, Roma that could be a little bit more of interest but hey uh maybe watch let's check against genoa if you're a real um seria connoisseur any case let's finish this video i will probably talk to you next week yeah we have champions league today not looking forward to milan playing Newcastle, newcastle but i think this inter team have not only a good group for them, but I think they can do damage if they continue so and lift Syria further. So maybe that's maybe the little silver lining that I want to put out there. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more Syria. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.